Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. So uh, I've got a, a friend of mine who's just started getting into wood turning and he's just looking for some basic information on how to how to basically take a log and turn it into this, turn it into something usable. So I've got a I've got a piece of black walnut right here. Uh, it's been sitting out. It's it's cured for better than a year, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna turn this from rough into a mallet and uh, explain basically what I'm doing. And you know what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do it with carbide wood turning tools. Now there's going to be some lathe purists and some trolls out there that say, oh, teach them how to use the traditional tools. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what's going to give him the quickest learning curve to be able to get right into wood turning. And if he wants to learn traditional tools later, so be it. He can do that but to shorten the learning curve so he can get right into making fun stuff out of wood on the turning lathe, I'm recommending to him to start using carbide wood turning tools. And that's what I'm gonna show him today. If you disagree with me, fine, disagree with me. I say, do whatever makes you happy. If you don't wanna take the time to learn the traditional tools, buy the carbides and use them. So anyway, I'm gonna take this little piece of black walnut here and I'm gonna turn it into something very simple. I actually do not have a wooden mallet. So I'm gonna make a wooden mallet out of this chunk of black walnut. So anyway, let's turn the camera around and let's talk about it. All right, so I've got my wood turning tools here and I bought these off of Amazon and it came with four heads on it. I'm not gonna use this one. This is a hollowing head, so we're just gonna set this one aside. You could really get this job done with two tools. I've got a, a round gouge or a round chisel. Carbide, it's got a round bit on it. And I've got a square one. And those are the two tools I'm gonna to primarily use today to turn this log. I also have a parting tool and we may or may not need to use this. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I might end up using this as well. So primarily we're going to use these. Now there is, there is one more tool that you get with this set. And that is, a, that is a detailer. It's got a diamond tip on it like that. It's very, very sharp and you can use that for doing detailing stuff. And you know what? We'll take that out of the box as well and we'll use that as well. Now, when I got this set from Amazon and you, I got an earlier video on making these handles. It only came with this, with this metal handle which was designed to be interchanged between all the tool heads. One of the first things I did was I went and I made wooden handles for all of these, and you can certainly do that. And I have a video previously, I'll put it in the description down below on how I did that. Uh, but I, I don't like the concept of switching handles around, so I just made handles for everything. So let's go ahead and let's get this log chucked up, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that, how I rough this thing, and then we're gonna make the mallet out of it. All right, the first thing you see with this log is you see that it's not round, it's not square, there's nothing normal about this log, uh, and it's got bark on it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to kind of find some semblance of middle. It's gonna be out of balance when it's on the lathe, but the more middle you can get this thing, the less likely it's gonna cause your lathe to shake around and bounce around. So you want to find some kind of semblance of middle. Now they make all kinds of fun little tools that you can use to find center. I, there's nothing more effective in my opinion than taking a tape measure and understanding that I'm seven and a half inches across there and realizing that three and three quarter inches is halfway. And then I'm seven inches here. So three and a half inches is halfway. That's about your middle right there. doesn't need to be any more accurate than that. And it doesn't need to be any more accurate than that because I'm gonna basically turn this log down to the middle. Now, the one thing you don't wanna do is you see right here, that's the middle of the, of the trunk. That's the pith. You wanna avoid that. You don't ever wanna try and chuck up close to that because that's just a icky soft spot in the, in the wood. Uh, I always try to turn around the pith and stay away from the pith as much as possible. Then you gotta to go to the other side and you basically gotta do the same thing. Now, this side is much rounder seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches. So it's a much rounder piece on this side. And that's the irregularity of, of a wood log. 
Oh, good, good shot. I made it right on the mat. So this is the middle right there. Okay, so we kind of know where the middle is on this thing. And like I said, they make some really cute, fun little tools that you can use to middle this up. Uh, you don't need those. This is a drive center. You can see it's got a tip on it. It's got four little teeth. This is what you're actually going to put in the, in the motor end or the, the spindle end of the lathe. This is the part that's actually going to turn. So that's where this center goes in. I'm going to take this, this drive center and you can see here, this is, this is an uneven cut. I'm not going to put the drive center on this side, but I am going to use the drive center to mark it. So now I've got a hole there, which will correspond to the center I have up in my, up in my tailstock. So now I'm going to flip it over. This is a little more straight of a cut. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put my drive center on the mark. going to pound it in there and I can pretty much pick up the log with my drive center. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to shove it in here and get my rest out of the way. And then I'm going to bring up my tailstock. I'm going to put my tailstock close and run that up. Okay, I'm cleared. Everything's got good clearance. And now I'm going to suck this down as hard as I can. I want a good, nice, tight fit. Now understand, this, this, is, this is a wood lathe. This is a dangerous piece of equipment. What I'm showing you is the way I do it. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way. And this is just the way I do it. So use at your own risk. I am not responsible for you using my methods. My methods may not, may or may not be the safest way to do it. I'm gonna slow my lathe down. Now I've just got a very inexpensive lathe and I have to change my speeds with my belt. So I'm gonna slow my lathe down as slow as I can possibly get it for doing the roughing operation. You don't want this thing spinning 3,000 RPM with an unbalanced load when you're doing your roughing. So I'm gonna slow mine way down. When I do roughing, I like to make it as slow as possible because this thing is gonna be crazy out of balance. It's probably gonna be so out of balance it's gonna wanna walk around. And the first tool I'm gonna to grab is my square gouge or my square chisel, my square carbide chisel. That's what I'm going to rough with. The other thing you need to have is a face shield. You can get these at Harbor Freight for 12 bucks. It's worth saving your, your face and your nose and your eyes. Get yourself a face shield. Think safety first. I usually try to have my carbide tool hit the, the work piece at just about center or maybe just a hair below center, but I like to have mine right around center. This is just a skosh low, so I'm gonna raise up my rest just a little. Spin it by hand to make sure it clears. And it doesn't seem like it's horribly out of balance, but it is out of balance. And my chisel is just a little higher than the center line in between the spindle, so I, that's where I'm gonna run with this. And when I do this, I present my chisel, and you can see it's out around, and I just slowly work in until I start making contact, and I'll just take off chunks of bark, and I'll work my way down the rest until I get it cleaned off, and then I'll, then I'll come back and I'll do more. Face shield down. My face shield down, I'm not going to be able to talk much, so I'm just going to show you.
I'm gonna show you a little bit about how you should properly hold your chisel. Stand with your, you wanna stand with your body fairly square to your work. You know, your feet kind of square to your work. You wanna have a good stable base. Put your, put your tool on the work rest and you wanna have your work rest as close to the work as you can without actually touching it. So you put your tool on your work rest and then I like to take this hand, especially when I'm roughing, and I like to grab it pretty good and I kind of rest, I kind of rest my hand on the rest and I wrap my fingers around the tool and I'm not, I'm not choking the frog death grip here. I'm just holding onto it firmly. Okay, so I've got my tool on the, on the tool rest. I've got my body fairly square to the, to the lathe. I've got a hold of my chisel and I've got this big long handle and I kind of push, put the handle into my side with my hand. And that gives me good stability. And then as I'm moving, I move my whole body and I just shift my weight back and forth on my feet to move the chisel back and forth across the work. This is the correct way to hold it. Now everybody's got little refinements and differences that they do with this. This is the way I like to do it. It gives me a good stable base. It gives me good control of my tool. I've got a good handle on it here and it gives me basically several points of contact between the tool, the lathe, the workpiece, and myself. So this is how I would like to hold my chisel when I'm working. So now I'll do a little work in this manner so you can see how I'm holding my chisel while I'm, while I'm trying to rough this out. holding this the chisel or the tool is fairly straight this way horizontal to the ground I'm not holding it down I'm not holding it up I'm not holding it crooked or anything like that that's all stuff you can work out later just try it for now just try to present as straight as you possibly can now I've got enough material removed here where it's pretty round but I'm still showing a little bark here so I'm going to just take a little more off show you here I'm not taking a full cut I'm only using about half the chisel now there's a very good reason why I'm only using half the chisel <coughs> part of that reason is is if you try to take a full chisel cut like this on a smaller lathe, you can actually stop the lathe. We're not in that big of a hurry. We just need to take a little bit at a time. The other reason is, is because as I'm going down the workpiece and I start cutting full chisel, then I know I'm fairly even with the stuff I cut before. Now you can see it's not a perfectly straight cut and that's fine, but it kind of helps to give you a gauge of where you, where you want to stop. So I recommend just taking a half a chisel at a time or maybe just a little more than half and just slowly working your way down and taking out the chunks you need. So we basically have this log roughed out. It's essentially round, it's very well balanced. Now let's go ahead and let's make something out of it. Now I can continue to use this chisel and I'm going to, and I'm gonna tell you a couple of things about carbide chisels now. Uh, carbide chisels have their advantages. They're very easy to use. They work really well. It, it very dramatically reduces your learning curve on teaching you how to or allowing you to make wood products on a lathe. The downside, they don't leave a horribly great finish. That's, it's, they, just, they do a lot of tear out and you're going to end up doing quite a bit of sanding. 
but if you want if you want quick results and you want to be able to turn out quick products this is a good way to do it and you can actually there's little tricks that i'm going to show you here that you can actually do to reduce some of that tear out even though you're not going to get it all gone it'll help you reduce it and you're still going to have to do some sanding but on a lathe sanding is pretty easy because you just spin it up and you, and you allow the lathe to do the work and you sand it with with paper uh, a benefit of carbide tools so you like see this tool here it's got four sides on it and I'm primarily using this for my cutting edge and I do use a little bit of this for my cutting edge but when these edges get dull you can turn them and you've got two fresh edges so you kind of get double use out of these things and then when they're really dull you just throw them away and then you, you put new ones on I've got extras of these and it takes a long time to dull these to the point where you can't use them <coughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down and start making it into something that's useful, i.e. I'm going to make a mallet out of it. You can see all the tear out in here. It's not a very smooth surface. And that's because when I presented the tool, I was straight in on it like this. Now I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna turn it just a little bit and I'm gonna make more of a shearing cut and I'm gonna go slow and I'm gonna take very light cuts and I'm gonna make that as smooth a surface as I possibly can. Right, so let's make a shearing cut with this radius tool and see if we can't clean up some of that tear out. So you could see that provided a much, much nicer surface. All right, so the 
sanding's all sanding's all done. It's a mallet. It's as smooth as I'm going to get it. Now I'm going to put just a little decorative thing on here. This is kind of a neat trick. So I'm going to take my diamond tool here, and I'm going to put just two little grooves. One there. One there in the handle. I've got a thin piece of wire here. And you can pretty much use any kind of wire you want. There's no, there's no rule saying this has got to be any kind of specific wire. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this wire and I'm going to burn those two grooves. I'm just going to set it on top of that groove and I'm going to apply some pressure until it starts to smoke. See there, it's smoking. There, I burned a groove in it. Apply some pressure. Starting to smoke. Just put a couple of little decorative grooves on there just for the fun of it. And now I'm going to put just a I'm just going to put a beeswax finish on here. Now, if you've never used beeswax for a wood finish, it's super easy on a wood lathe. And all you need is a little chunk of beeswax and a paper towel. Do not use cloth. I'm going to say that again. Do not use cloth. It's the most dangerous thing you could possibly do. So you take your little chunk of beeswax here, spin your lathe up, and you just put on a good liberal coat of beeswax everywhere you want to finish. Put a lot on there. I put on quite a bit. And if you know a guy like I do, you get your beeswax from actually from a live working beehive and it smells a bit like honey. Okay, I've got a good coat of beeswax on there now. Okay. Now you use your paper towel. And this is why it's dangerous. If you use cloth to do this, the cloth can get wrapped up in the, in the wood lathe and cloth doesn't break. It tears very difficultly. Whereas a paper towel rips pretty easy. So then you just take your paper towel and you high pressure and you really want to heat this up and you, it, you basically you're melting the beeswax into the wood and you can see how it's changing a the color there that means you're melting it right into the wood it seals up all those pores and it creates a really nice finish it's all natural now we'll do the mallet head I'm literally burning or melting the wax right into the pores of the wood. And it seals everything up really nicely. There's no chemicals, there's no danger here. Just don't use a cloth rag to, to melt the wax. Use a paper towel. Always use a paper towel. And look at that finish. It's nice and smooth. And there we go. There's my mallet. Turned out of a piece of black walnut log. Suitable for pounding, beating your children. I bet you you could even crush margaritas or something with this thing. So there it is. Uh, Took a piece of black walnut log, I went from bark to finished product using carbide tool. They're easy, they are 
require very little as far in the way of sharpening or maintenance. The learning curve is very fast on them and you can get right into wood turning with very, very little practice and turn out a good quality product. Thank you for riding along. If you like this kind of content, if you like what I'm doing here, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments. I always appreciate the comments. Keep them clean, keep them respectful, and help me grow the channel by subscribing. Eddie here with Jack of All Trades. I appreciate you riding along with me, and we will see you on the next video.